This is Chris Whalen, CPA, and welcome to the Street Level Business Podcast. This is one of a series of interviews that I'm calling Coronavirus Lockdown Business Stories, where I interview other business owners about their experience with the lockdown. And today, we're very lucky to have Robert Hazelrig. He's going to tell us about what he does for business, and we're going to have a great conversation about all things lockdown and business. This is going to be fantastic for all business owners and entrepreneurs. So good afternoon, Robert. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Robert Hazelrig, um, known as the Graphics Guy. If you do a Google search for Graphics Guy, you'll find several dozen pages of results for me. i uh, been doing graphic design for about 30 years. Um, back in the day, everything was done hand lettering for signs. Uh, nowadays, um, oh my God, I do just about everything and anything that you can imagine related to marketing, and most of it's on the web. Great. So. Prior, prior to the lockdown, what I'm trying to get, I, I, I'd love to get your initial reaction, either within your discipline, what you do, but also, so when you, when you heard there was going to be a lockdown, what were your first business thoughts, if you will, about that? Well, you know, obviously I was concerned, right? Um, anytime there is an impact to uh, the economy, it affects my business. And it certainly did right off the bat. I mean, I have a, a lot of uh, big clients that, that sh you know, shut down events and, um, you know, um, but at the same time, I was uh, somewhat optimistic because generally when a downturn like this happens, and I've seen it in the past with my business, you know, as people get laid off, they still need to generate an income. So most people will go out and start their own business. And, and that's where I come in because I can provide all those services from, from logos to websites. You know? So would you say that your, your average client for doing graphic and design, are you, is it a longer term kind of project for you? So you come in at the beginning, like I would do for the accounting side and come up with plans and marketing plans. So how long is the timeline for a normal engagement, say prior to this? Would you say if you came into a new company, how long would you be interfacing with their team and things like that to the point where you'd be done with your work? So um, some of my clients I've had for um, more than a dozen years and I do prefer to get people at the beginning because, you know, I build all those assets that the business needs. You know, if I start with a logo and then go to their brochures and <laughs> move on from there. Um, you know, I, I have a good understanding of their branding and I'm able to keep it consistent and work for them. Most of the businesses that uh, I have as clients, I've had for many years and most of the clients that come to me uh, stick with me for a very long time because I'm easy to work with. I, I'm sort of flexible with people's um, uh, budgets. Uh, I understand where they're coming from and, uh, and I really like to help. It's more important to me to get somebody off on the right foot and get things working for them um, because that's where I get my success. My success is derived from their success. If I'm successful for them, then they go out and they spread the word. And, and uh, that's how I get a big bulk of all my, you know, my clients is from, you know, word of mouth referrals. So from, from a practical standpoint with your daily work, then you were you doing a, mostly online sessions and video meeting or presenting graphics or did the fact that you couldn't visit people, did that hamper any of your profit centers at all? Or that really hasn't been a problem for you for your, for your, I, I know there's been maybe been a slowdown in total business, but mm -hmm. has the having to go to a virtual platform for communication, has that hampered anything or no? So really not much for me as that hampered me because I've really been in this digital space for uh, since 2008. So 12 years um, in 2008, it, you know, technically I started my business in 96 as a freelancer. I freelanced for a handful of, of large companies on the side while I worked for big companies. Uh, I worked for a big publishing company, big advertising companies. Um, you know, as a professional full-time employee and had stuff on the side the entire time since 96. But uh, in 2008, I went out on my own. And in 2008, I was working for Cy Sims, the clothing store in Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, I was working for uh, Citibank and, um, you know, an organization at Columbia Law School. So uh, three really big clients that I had for myself. And obviously, you know, like I can't be flying to London 
every time I need to make a change on the publication that I was working on. So um, I was using something at the time called um, Adobe Connect, uh, which is basically what we're doing now. It's just like Zoom, only it was just for the most part sharing the desktop. So I could get on the phone with somebody and show them exactly what I was working on and make changes with them. Um, so, you know, I've been in this digital space for a while and, um, you know, very comfortable working this way. Um, I have clients in Florida, I've got clients in California, you know, my clients are, are used to this and they're, they were prepared for this, you know, because of the fact that we'd been working this way for so long. Um, that said, you know, those big clients, you know, like I mentioned, Columbia Law School, they had to cancel classes, they had to, um, you know, shut down, um, you know, they, they had a big event uh, that I normally do all the work for that happens in June. And, um, you know, that, you know, that hit me hard because that's, you know, when <laughs> I, I manage the website for uh, the organization in Columbia Law School. It's not Columbia Law School, just making that clear. It's an organization within Columbia Law School um, that I do the work for, but they have classes there. I, I do the website that does the e-commerce so they can register for the class. So um, I do the save the dates, all the signage for the event, uh, uh, all the tchotchkes for the event, some of the presentations that are displayed at during sessions and um, all the way through to the diplomas. I print some of the diplomas for when people graduate. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, back in March, I get a phone call and they say um, it's off. And, you know, this is the first time it's been off. It's a big annual event where thousands of people come to this, this, this special event and uh, not thousands, hundreds. Um, and, you know, it's, it's shut down. So obviously, you know, those types of things, you know, have, you know, hit me. Um, but, you know, we've been able to pick it up and move their classes online. And actually, they have an event tonight. <laughs> it's not replacing that event. Um, but for the first time ever, we've sold out. So, um, you know, you know, with a little help and ingenuity, and, you know, I, I still supply the graphics for it. Obviously, I'm not making the same amount of money that I would had it been a big event where there were tchotchkes and posters and banners that, that were actually physically there. Um, but I am still, you know, doing the work for them. So. Right. So this, I mean, you're bringing up a bunch of good points about things you do. Of course, there's physical work, you know, tchotchkes, you're, de you're dealing with things for events. So I think it's really important for people to understand that the level of creative that you need to have to do those things. And um, so part of what I want my guests on this, on this, the interview series to say is, you know, so what should people who are looking for someone with your skill set or think they do, what should they have expected so far from someone they had in their life that was supposed to be doing what you do? So what should they be expecting, you know, from someone like you that works at the highest level to make sure they're getting what they need? Of course, if they're not getting it, I have, I'm going to urge you at the end of the program to give your contact info so they can get in touch with you. Because to me, you are the expert at this, the best I know right now. Well, thanks. Um, as I said, I've been doing it for 30 years and I've been doing it for some fairly large companies, um, um, Johnson & Johnson, um, Philips Lighting, L'Oreal Makeup. I mean, big, big players. Um, done a lot of work from packaging to billboards, you name it. Um, but um, what should the mom and pop shop, the local business, um, one of the pitfalls that I, I, I find continuously <laughs> is a lot of businesses don't understand how important their branding is and how important the consistency in that branding is. And branding is more than just a look. Branding is a message and it's a position, right? Um, but every time I see, I'm not going to name names, but there's, there's a local hardware store. And they've got like 15 different logos on their trucks, on their building, <laughs> even in their TV spots. And um, they don't realize that, you know, without that consistency, people need to relearn them all the time. Like, so you see that message come up in your face and you have to think a little bit, wait, they look a little bit different than they do last time. I can give an analogy and I do tell a lot of my clients this, that, you know, every time somebody comes to me and say, Hey, I want to change a logo or uh, I don't like the way this looks anymore. And I want to change it. I, I have to explain to them, well, you know, it's, it's a really big endeavor to, to make that kind of change because you have to do it everywhere. 
you know, you can't leave one of your trucks with, you know, your old logo on it. You really need to move forward with this change everywhere you go. Um, and, you know, the analogy um, I, I tell people is, you know, like if you've ever gone to the grocery store and you're looking to buy Lipton soup, you go down the same aisle that you've been down before, you're looking in the same position in the aisle that you've looked in before. And you're looking at that spot and you don't see the Lipton soup. And the reason you're not seeing the Lipton soup is because the Lipton soup changed its packaging. And they do that all the time. Um, well, not all the time. They do it frequently enough that right. it becomes frustrating. And, and part of the reason is, is because we're being bombarded with all these other elements on that shelf, right? We're seeing all these other graphics. And the other reason is, is because it's not what you're familiar with looking at. So your message gets lost a little bit. So, you know, branding and consistency really, really is important. And, um, you know, I learned that very early on in my career, creating signs for AT&T. I was the branding police over at a small design studio in Red Bank. And uh, that was my job. I had to learn uh, a telephone book um, size of rules and regulations. Yeah. Um, you know, to this is how the AT&T logo is used and it better be right or it's going to be rejected. And, um, you know, I've kept that in in my, in the back of my mind ever since, you know, so when I move forward with my clients, I, you know, I try and think of and imagine, um, you know, how to move that forward, you know, keep that going. Um, I, I urge everyone, you know, to make sure they're branded and their logos are correct and, you know, get um, involved with a professional like you. So I, I see it often, very often too, that it, it makes people, it makes people very comfortable when, when they see consistency you're talking about logos not being the same. So, you know, people, it could be it's subconscious, a subconscious thing that people feel comfortable with consistency um, and, 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 and messaging and, and, and messages being, being clear and simple and short. Um, so, Robert, thank you so much for being here. If you have any, other, any comments you'd like to make regarding the economy in general, but also make sure you tell everyone slowly and clearly how to reach you. Yeah, well, um, I'd just like to make one more point about that branding and consistency, and I can give you another analogy. And it's like, if you've ever been to a business networking meeting or met with a new client and they, and they hand you one of those cards that's been made at Vistaprint, and you know what I mean, because you pick it up and you recognize it because you've seen that same template that's been used before. Um, it weakens your stance. I mean, when somebody hands me that business card that I've seen a dozen times because the baker used it. And then, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, the other, the laundry mat also used the same business card, right? Um, you, you know, you, you've got no strength there and it sort of cheapens your brand and it makes you, it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't make you look like a professional. So, um, you know, if you want to look professional, that's, that's when I come into play and, you know, if you can do without, I understand, you know, a lot of business companies, a lot of businesses come to me and they say, Hey, you know, I need your help. And, you know, um, I, sometimes they walk away because my prices are a little bit higher than other people's. Um, but it's at that point where I, you know, I tell them, you know, if you can, if you can use your niece to design your logo, Good luck, please. I hope right. it works out for you because <laughs> sometimes it does. Uh, but, you know, when you want to look professional, um, that's, you know, where my 30 years of expertise comes and in. For everyone watching and listening, I'm going to put Robert's contact information in the body of my blog page where you might be watching this or in the video description in YouTube. But Robert, why don't you give us some Elisa cell phone number before we go? All right. So first of all, if you want to find me, just Google the graphics guy. I come, I've got like 17 pages worth of results when you do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Robert Hazelrig, the graphics guy, I create more business for your business. My telephone number is 732-513-6807, or you can just go to roberthazelrig.com, and uh, there's lots of ways to get in touch with me. I'm all over Facebook, I'm all over Instagram, you name it, I'm there. Thank you, Robert. Have a really good rest of the day, and everyone for watching and, and listening, I truly appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks, Chris.